All right, let's talk more about this raid on, uh, on Mar-a-Lago 22 days ago. For more on that, let's welcome back the former acting attorney general, Matthew Whitaker. Mr. Sir, Attorney General, great to see you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I want to first get your reaction because Rob <clears> mentioned <throat> earlier Judge Eileen Cannon. She's likely to appoint a special master on Thursday. Do we have any idea of who that will be? And at this point, because it looks like they've looked through all the material, is this a moot point? Well, good morning. And no, it's not a moot point to appoint a special master. Remember, they have obviously, during the search warrant that was executed 22 days ago, grabbed documents that they shouldn't have had. They had the passports. Those weren't listed on the uh, nor on the inventory, nor were they listed on the search warrant to start with. They also uh, ended up with what is what they're describing as, you know, several, uh, not a lot of potentially attorney-client privileged documents. If I'm the judge in this case, I understand that that is a uh, signal that, that they overreached and grabbed too much. Now, remember, I, I have contended and continue to contend that this was an illegal search warrant from the start. It was right. not uh, done with particularity or specificity required under the law, and that President Trump's Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable searches and seizures was completely violated. Um, you know, it is uh, going to be an interesting week. You know, tomorrow, the or, or today, actually, the federal government needs to uh, file among other things, both their argument and a more detailed inventory of what was uh, grabbed. And I think that's what's going to determine what the judge does in this case. Yeah, it almost feels like, Matt, that this case is is sort of falling apart. Again, the New York Times, um, that article they came out with yesterday where they call this raid a document inquiry, which is just, that is so laughable but, but so classic uh, that it comes from the New York Times. They say that this is one of the more challenging, complicated criminal investigations that we've had in, quote, recent memory. Uh, it almost seems like they have to indict Donald Trump to justify the raid 22 days ago. I, I, I disagree only on the fact that they don't have to indict Donald Trump. So you think they could just drop they could just drop eyes. the whole thing and, and return the boxes? I mean, yeah, you do. Yeah, I, I, I've always believed that this was a, a legitimate dispute. Uh, you know, you read the Presidential Records Act earlier. This is a legitimate dispute uh, about documents. Uh, President Trump disagreed and his team disagreed with the archives position on many of these documents. Uh, they took a draconian move to execute a search warrant when this issue could have been resolved much uh, differently and much easier through continued ongoing negotiations. Uh, and so I just don't think at the end of the day, uh, the Department of Justice is going to indict President Trump. He hasn't done anything wrong. Right. Uh, and there is no, you know, again, there we could go through the mens rea requirements and, and all the things that criminal statutes require. But in this case, uh, this was about getting the documents in the possession of the government, and they had lost patience, I think unreasonably lost patience, in getting these documents back um, from President Trump. Yeah, sir, we have about 30 seconds left, but I do want to get your reaction to um, Tim Tebow, who was part of the FBI, who is no longer with the department. Just your initial reactions to this. Well, obviously, uh, there are going to be people um, on both sides of this argument um, that, you know, feel uh, strongly and believe uh, things did or didn't happen. I've talked to several FBI agents that I worked with when I was U.S. Attorney in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, that are outraged uh, by the FBI's conduct. And right. I think we're going to see continued whistleblowers and, and uh, people, you know, speaking out. Yeah, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley basically says that he buried the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election, polling after the 2020 election. One in six would have changed their vote had they known about that uh, laptop's existence prior to the election. So again, it's the FBI playing politics. Just want to clear up for anybody just waking up. Uh, this is not, and, and Matt, I know you played football uh, in college in Iowa. This is not Tim Tebow, the no. football player. This is Tim Tebow, the, the now uh, retired uh, high-ranking FBI agent. Um, a lot more on that to come, I'm sure. Uh, yep. Former Acting Attorney sure. General Matthew Whitaker, great to have you back on. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.